Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And we are back looking at one of our usual sorts of slides with Stephanie. Stephanie, welcome back. Hi. Stephanie's quickly becoming a favorite. Um, so we've been told there'll be NRBCs. We're mm -hmm. looking at the gamut of immature NRBCs. And NRBCs there are, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to like just use delay tactics. All right. Let's talk about other things we see. I see target cells. Polychromasia. Uh, polychromasia. And those uh, kind of go hand in hand with the NRBCs. It's like when you have an issue where you have accelerated rhizopoiesis, you're going to usually see both. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent point. You know, and I'm just noticing too, um, the platelets look uh, like uh, without granules. Mm -hmm. Just kind of weird a little bit. But, um, yeah, this is a fun slide. Yeah, yeah. So whenever Melissa says fun, it's the opposite <laughs> <laughs> reality. So, so yeah, lots of abnormal red cell morph. Um, what I would say is like a textbook kind of, I don't know, like polychromatophilic or um, maybe yeah. towards orthochromic. So this would be, the, to me, this would be the stage right before the orthochromic. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, and then we see some horrifying stuff like this. Oh, wait, right? wait. So it's the stage row four, which is the polychromatophilic because of the blueness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, and, but not as blue as the basophilic. Right. Yep. Yep. And I, I think there's something to be said for uh the nucleus is a little less clumped than our typical orthochromic ready to extrude its nucleus. Um right. So yeah. Yeah, so it's not does. as pycnotic as the orthochromic. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's talk about the the elephant in the room. Yeah, the elephant, indeed. Yeah, so this thing is is horrifying looking, right? So um, we have a lot of, uh, we have very loose chromatin patterns suggesting immaturity. We have multiple nucleoli, it appears. Are you going to uh, draw them or you want me to? You can you can do it. I, my, yeah. I'd say at least three. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I always like to say, like, you know, like one nucleoli, we can all kind of explain away, right? Um, like googly eyes. Given certain circumstances. Two, the likelihood of like a bad actor or malignancy or thing starts to like, that that starts to increase. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of nucleoli. I would think there looks to be about three, maybe more. So that's not normal. Um, now, what, um, now, what are the rules? Because usually if you see a cell like this and you think it's going to be one of your immature red blood cells, like up to what stage do you just call it an NRBC? That is an excellent. And excellent. then at what stage do you really have to classify it as being something like a blast? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, I think it really depends on the like the heme path how the procedure is kind of structured and uh, what they're comfortable with mm -hmm. um, i think there's like arguments for for um using the different classifications they have kind of like different utility i like the idea of pulling them out of the white count because well they don't represent uh you know um an immune cell right so it's nucleated and that white blood cell serves as like a stand-in for immunity right like you know Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be generally speaking all things considered if the white counts low you're more susceptible to infections and right like so there's like that kind of school right and then i suppose there's like a point right where it's so immature that well categorically it's a blast That's right like, yeah um i do think personally i'm inclined to want to put that in the 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 scary looking one as an nrbc um right I just, um, yeah, that, it's so blue. Yeah, it sticks out at you. <laughs> I, it almost looks like Melissa just took a marker and just started yeah. like, you know, doctoring the slide microscopically. I did not. <laughs> if you could do such a thing, you um, <laughs> very talented. So yeah, I, I, it, I think NRBC fits best, but like mm -hmm. I by no means would take a firm stance i guess well i think it depends too because some pronoma blasts yeah they look like blasts 
Yeah. And you right, can't really right. tell that it's a pro norma blast versus a Milo blast versus a versus versus. So I think it it'll depend to you on mm-hmm. the patient. Can you tell it's a pro norma blast? Because if you can, then perhaps you enumerate those separately. But if you can't, then morphologically they're all blasts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I even joked before we started recording this that um, when you look in the textbooks and they're like, "This is the earliest recognizable form of red cell," and I'm like, "Nope, I can't tell that that's, <laughs> that's a red cell. This yeah, one does I- look like it's a red cell. The more and more." We- the textbooks will tell you, oh, it's going to have like that Golgi and it's beautiful. And it's like, it's a blast. Blast is a blast is a blast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll look around. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. So let me ask you, Dave, um, how do you think this will affect the white blood cell count? Yeah. So, uh it should de- like for whatever. So it's tough too, because it depends on the technology a little bit. It does. So mm-hmm. My intuition was that this came from our XE series, which is a generation behind the XNs. And in my experience had notorious issues with nucleated red cells, especially this immature. Yeah. Um, I think even an XN might fail when it comes to, comes to some of these cells. Um, so I think perce- I think the best thing on the technical level, you can dig out from the analyzer the raw nucleated count. And I think that would be a valuable thing to set aside. Mm-hmm. And then you should enumerate these separate from the 100 cell differential and then correct that count and report like that. I think that's probably the best way to go. Um, and so I mean to say, take the uncorrected, unaltered white count. Don't correct the already correct <laughs> white count so that's something that it be at the bench could do um mm-hmm. don't want to do that <laughs> but i think that's how i would be in class so like you know it's 3 a.m and it's me and then less experienced tech how are we going to proceed i think that's what we probably land on makes sense um this this is kind of scaring me a little bit so like i'm like cautious about are there reactive lymphs or things here? Um, but I don't like, it looks like it's folded over there, right? Yeah, and to me, it's still kind of giving immature a little bit. That's Definitely. Yeah. I'm bugged. I, this one bugs me a lot. Well, I feel like the chromatin pattern is immature, but more mono. Yeah. Right. I didn't think it was going to be of the erythroid. I thought it was either a, a white blood cell, um, immature. So like I, my first instinct was, uh, I started thinking about limps, but I think I'm very uh, receptive to mono as well. well. And there is a very prominent, very nice nucleoli right here. Mm. Mm. Tougher to see from my yeah uh, um, are you thinking like a pro monocyte or something like that that's what it looks like i don't mm-hmm. know that there are pro monocytes on this slide but that's what it looks like to me i'm also gonna um talk about the platelets again yeah yeah Where's my granules very true i don't like that and then we have some schistocytes in the background too we do we do have schistocytes mm. The targets, and then even like, like I don't know. <laughs> so I, I would actually be considering there are um certain like thalassemias, perhaps that might cause something like this. Uh, I don't, but not the platelets though. I would, yeah. Never mind. I'm gonna throw that thought in the garbage. Do we have a patient age? You said it was a newborn? I think so. Okay. This is from my slide. Let's see. It's I wrote just immature NRBCs. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I mean yeah, I asked cool. that because um when Dave brought up the thalassemia, those usually aren't diagnosed until about six months of age. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, although it's not diagnosed until so six months of age, will there still be funky? morphology on this and the smear so it kind of depends specifically on the thal right so for beta thal 100 
um right uh this could be a while before we would see this but like um a hemoglobin h like um bart's uh is definitely still in the realm of possibility mm -hmm. um but i don't see why the platelets would look this funky and i don't know that i've ever seen that immature of the nrbcs be present so yeah something something is really going on for those to be released from the bone marrow yeah, okay. so you see the orthochromic, um, the poly, but mm -hmm. usually like basophilic and the pronomoblast. You don't see those, right? Like that's rare. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep moseying along. Nice. Yeah. How strange. This is also giving me like a leuco erythroblastic picture, almost like you see in like um like a small fibrosis. Is minus the fact that I don't see any teardrops. Hmm. You do have a mixture of immature whites and immature reds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, because I struggle. Like, not all of these can be red cells, right? Like, that I don't know. To me, those look like white cells. Yeah, I think there are also myeloblasts on here. Hmm. That's okay. troubling. Yeah. I think there's also maybe karyocytic fragments in here. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh. This isn't good. Something's definitely wrong with the bone marrow. <laughs> but these are pretty nice looking NRBCs. Yeah. Like well, what we would like say definitely is an NRBC. Well, now... So now I'm like bothered by the the binuclear um the budding kind of morphologies. So there's a there's a possibility that we're close to like some kind of a cytokinetic um like a division maybe perhaps. But now we start thinking about dyspoetic features, right? And so that would be not normal feature. Right. Um, Something like you would see in MDS almost. Right, right. Um, and we do have congenital, this erythropoetic um, anemia, right? So this, the CDAs. I've never personally seen one or known that I was looking at one. But yeah, again, I would be miserable when I sat down and looked at <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is one that you'll spend your afternoon counting. That no, oh, really yeah. though. I'm, I'm probably well, this is good. Yeah, this is a good field here. This is a great field. So yeah. Stephanie, the whole time has been like normal limb, please. Normal limb, please. Does this look like perhaps like a normal limb? I would say so. Yeah, and cool. this is like that side by side comparison, like of all three. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, to me, okay, so the in the middle would be your lymphocyte. Mm -hmm. The one to mm -hmm. my right is orthochromic, getting ready to release the nucleus. And then the one to the left would probably be a poly. I could not agree more, yeah. But you can see the way the chromatin pattern of the nucleus is so different. And, yeah. This is actually like an interesting... Like um, when we talk about teaching chromatin pattern, instructing on chromatin pattern, this is a nice um, mosaic or whatever of of that spectrum of, of, of pretty mature cells, right? Like, so these are pretty mature. Um, but yeah, yep, well said. Like to me, the nucleus of the poly on the left looks like a soccer ball almost. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And that, that I... The, the soccer ball, I always think of like uh, CLL lymphs um, and plasma cells tend to kind of um, do those things as well, those those patterns. Uh, yeah. Of course, this is 100% fully confident that's an NRBC. But yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And to me, the nucleus is the gives the giveaway. Yes. And yeah. the cytoplasm too, I guess the color. Um, hmm. It's the texture, Stephanie. I always mm -hmm. struggle to find the word for it, but how that the texture of the cytoplasm feels in my mind's eye. <laughs> just, it, you know, it just isn't lymphoid. It just totally no. is not lymphoid. Yeah. No. Especially plasma cytoid. 
Yes. Plasma cytoid is almost like a, a gritty look to it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. You can actually see the the bit of grit in our in our lymph over here too. Um, the, oh, my label kind of messed that up. But we can see that a little bit of texture in the in the lymphocyte that is totally absent in um, in these cells. Uh, but yeah, cool. That's pretty. Very pretty. <laughs> Oh, ask and you shall receive. Yeah, cool. So we got normal limbs now showing up. Yeah, we couldn't find them earlier. We can find and, them now at least. And finally, like a granulated platelet. Right. Appears to be a little large, maybe. About big, yeah. Double the size of a normal platelet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm hmm. The other thing that could account for the, oh my goodness. Oh, wait, let me pull the other guy back. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I'm pulling him out. No, come back. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs> you say get somebody else to do it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go on break. So, <laughs> break. so all right. Um, so this one looks a lot like what we started with with our immature red cells. Um, so that deep basophilia there. So um, that's cool. We're good there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have an orthochromic in the corner here. We're good there. Um, so let's start up here though, like. Um, it's like the nucleus gives me like monocyte vibes, but the nucleus cytoplasm ratio is like off. Like I expect more cytoplasm or less nucleus, depending on how you want to like, uh, think about it. Yeah. For a mono. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Well, I'm wondering if we're looking at immature monos again. Yeah. Because well, this one. This one's giving me the same vibes as that other one that I thought was a pro mono. Oh, this is so hard to call. This is where you're like you're desperate for like a flow cytometry or something. If I'm being honest, <laughs> right. well, what, what started out as a slide for immature NRBCs is turning into everything. Yeah, literally, right, and and a lot of uncertainty. Um, the, I think so. I'm a little tangent though. You know, a lot of hematologists, laboratory people put it on themselves to be 100% correct about morphology calls and things like that. The most critically important thing that you do with this slide is you is it gets escalated and there has to be follow-up testing and there has to be like uh, a follow-up in like an expeditious manner because, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't know what that is, Right. But we do know that this is incredibly pathologic, right? Right. I, I say as long as you recognize it first and foremost as being abnormal, then you're already on the right track. Yep. That's, the, I mean, that's not just half the battle, right? Like that's sometimes the whole battle. Yeah. So then just get this to the next stage to pass the baton. Right. Um, yeah. So deeply troubling those two cells, um, you know, what, what, what do we say about that thing there too? It it's like lymphy, right? Yeah, it's looking lymphy to me too. Yeah, it's, it's a goofy one, but <laughs> uh, but man, like the nucleoli in in the uh, in that cell there, they're beautiful, vicious. Yeah, let me draw them so that everyone can see them if they're having trouble. <clears throat> I think the other thing I have a problem with with that cell is the um, the contours of the nucleus, like these little like lumps and kind of folds and stuff kind of bug me. I don't like that. Yeah. So a lot of things that to me that even if this was a newborn, just deeply troubling. Definitely. Um, um, and we always go towards maybe some kind of an acquired like leukemia or something. There are inherited disorders that can cause these dysplastic sort of um, 
abnormal uh, abnormal features. So, um, do you think this type of condition will warrant a bone marrow? Yeah, I, that's a great question. Um, I don't I I don't see how you could get away from wanting uh, to marrow. Um, although I'm totally open to a he monk doc slap me in the face telling me no, you know, but. <laughs> So th th there may be pieces of information that could be gleaned outside of the smear and outside of the CBC that mm -hmm. would maybe, you know, I guess if there is some kind of a family history of a kind of inherited disorder, then, you know, um, maybe, but geez, how do you not look in the marrow? I think yeah, like I if, this, if this truly is a child, this would concern me a lot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's no doubt. Um, I, I, let's say let's go further right this concerns me a lot full stop right like <laughs> I, no human being should have their peripheral blood look like this i just wanted to bring this guy in here this this nrbc i wanted to bring him in that's a plasma cell no it's not it's not it's not i said i'm just trying to be funny no but <laughs> But right, the the nucleus. The it's two how, rounds. How clumpy it is! Like so, like the Golgi. Somebody looking at that and saying that is a plasma cell, though. Yeah, yeah, and I could see, I could see someone making that mistake. But there's a couple really? of things. I, I, I can, I, I can realistically see someone making the mistake. Mm -hmm. I think they're right. wrong. They make that mistake. Yeah, to me that just pops out NRBC, and I don't know if it's because again the way the nucleus looks, like those little white areas, like if you can compare it to the left, to the mm -hmm. left of it, yep. I mean it's just totally different. Yep. So what uh, uh, Stephanie's commenting on are these white kind of striations that carry through that they are absent, <laughs> right? And they're they're absent from this uh this mature lymph off to the side here, and um, yeah. So you're spot on. I, the other thing too that strikes me that Melissa and I have kind of talked about offline before is how round it is. It's right. very round. Yes, I agree. Um, so, you know, that's kind of a signal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the texture of the cytoplasm screams NRBC to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it it's not eccentric enough. It's not big enough to be more of the lymphoid kind of uh, cell line. Um, I agree. But man, I, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think about what it's like to be inexperienced and to, um, you know, Professor Cabral teaches you what a plasma cell looks like and then you look at that cell next. You might make an error, you know? Um, I'm skipping that one only because... <laughs> <laughs> Only because the cytoplasm to me it looks like the staining went wrong some way, some way. Mm. Um, and unless I see another one that looks like that, I'm probably gonna skip that one in the middle. I I feel like it could be like a reactive um sort of lymph picture. It's possible. Yeah. It does um, kind of look like see. it's like smearing this way though. Yeah. 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 Which would influence how it's uh staining and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, Our skip a sites category. Where's the skip a site button? <laughs> <laughs> Super polychromatophilic red cell. Yes. Right? And these are large too. Yep, quite large. So now there's a binucleate um, red cell. So and again, these are troubling. Budding yeah. nucleus, the binucleated, like these are things that you normally don't see. Especially in a kid, right? Like that's yeah. not. Uh, yeah this one's going for like the flow express this is going to ride the flow cytometry express if you ask me let's talk about the one over there um that looks like the nucleus is eccentric but mm -hmm. the color of the cytoplasm is still giving me nrbc 100 percent agreed mm -hmm. yep it's too uniform um, yeah, the site is just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah, this is someone who just learned plasma cells, worst nightmare, right? This is that. Um, well, look at this one. Yeah. Yep. One that I could see someone saying, it's a plasma cell. Yep. Yep. I can see that. But I, 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 for our eyes, I'm sure all of us saw this field and there's only one cell that's, um, that doesn't just hit us with NRBC right away. I don't right. necessarily know what that is. I'm going to be pretty agnostic to that too, to be honest, but everything else is NRBC in the fields. Definitely. I agree. <clears throat> wow. This one looks kind of like a jaggedy beat up lymph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably lymphoid, you know? Yeah, I would say probably lymph. But like, you know, I, I would definitely ask Melissa to do a second count. And, I, you know, I, I think this slide might get passed around a little bit around the lab and um, get different eyes on it. But tricky. Mm -hmm. All right, let me look around. I'm trying to find. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Close. Yep. And I like how it's like adjacent to the the NRBC. Yeah, white. right. Right away, I'm saying two NRBCs. The one in the middle is giving me more of a white blood cell. Yeah, yeah, it's really tricky because it it could be a white blood cell. In that case, it would be, you know, so like, how do you even categorize it though? Right, this is like other category. Yeah. How would you feel comfortable? Well, I'm looking like at the, the the cytoplasm, the um, the tipping of the I guess the basophilic tipping. It's like lymphy, right? But yeah. Mm -hmm. I just the uh, the the nucleus is just troubling. It is. Still gives me yeah. immature though. Yes. Yeah. 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 I look at that and think blast. I know that's, yeah. That's right. I think these are these might be malignant cells, but. Um, and I think I see maybe one nuclei, nucle nuclei at the bottom. There's yeah. one here too. One there. Yeah. Looks like there's actually one right next to it. There's a lot of issues with these. Yeah, I, I think I would probably I would probably restart my diff if I'm being honest. And then I would just start sticking those all in another category and then writing a description for the path and hopefully talking to them. But um more weird NRBC nuclei. Those are concerning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, some of those are given dysplastic features. <laughs> so that looks like a really immature NR NRBC, right? Is this the pronormoblast, the earliest stage, the recognizable stage, the elusive? That's, yeah. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of cytoplasm. Yeah, I was going to say, I would like to see a little bit more cytoplasm. It does look like it's dark blue. What's there, but it is hard to see. Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't we go a little bit thicker? Okay. Ooh, actually, on our way. Let's stop here. Yeah. Both in RBCs. <laughs> yeah, and 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 we've that deep basophilia, super immature chromatin pattern. We have like a a type, right? Like a category, I think. Uh, well, I'm wondering that. if this is the basophilic, so not the pronormal yep. blast. This is right. the next one, and if you yep. look like right here, it looks like there's some hemoglobin starting. Yeah, I I would say that that's reasonable. I don't know why I drew. Um, <laughs> there there are some dark purple kind of heterochromatin areas too so yeah i think that that's fair mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um if you were in the business of categorizing your nrbcs that that would be appropriate yeah i agree yeah i'm running out of stuff to say it's got that basophilic cytoplasm too mm -hmm. and the nuclei yep it is some big to... RBCs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a the uh my first look at the the RBCs was like, oh, this is a PD. Oof. Like, what? This thing is really oh. ugly, and you, you you can't even see it as well on here. Let me try to 
So oh, ugly. It's got like it's almost like chunks, pieces. It's not even like a nucleus together. It's kind of funky looking. Mm -hmm. So this is this is more evidence of dysplastic features, in my opinion. I think so too. That that nucleus, like that DNA, shouldn't be staining like that. Like that doesn't make sense. The rest of the slide is QCing very very well. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. There's a couple of campesites. Nice, really mm -hmm. nice looking this guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I'm I'm kind of like I'm on this inherited dysplasia or some kind of uh um leukemia with dysplastic features or so circling back, right? I yeah, like this patient needs to be bone marrowed. Um, Definitely at this point. <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know how you could possibly avoid it. I don't think you can. Ooh. So that looks like a good mono, right? That does. Yeah. Okay. So, but that's comforting to me. So <laughs> when I can see like a normal representative of the cell lines, it, it kind of helps ground me again that all the abnormal stuff is really, truly abnormal. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, so would this be another one of our basophilic um, uh, normoblasts or what have you? Um, I think I would, so. I would say so. Yeah. It's so, it's like, I'm I'm cruising around and it's just like so dark. I'm like, well, I'm going over there. <laughs> it almost has the cytoplasm like you would see in like a Burkitt's lymphoma. Mm. That nice midnight blue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, missing this. The is that the starry night? The uh, the yep, yep, yep. Yep. Another nice binucleate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think uh, on the spectrum of disorders, some kind of an inherited dyserythropoietic kind of picture. Ooh, well. um, maybe a Luke. Wow. Yeah, that's horrible. There's still an NRBC. Mm -hmm. Well, I see why you wrote NRBC on the slide, Melissa. So. <laughs> if, I, if I had to pick like a group of letters to write on that slide, it would be NRBC. <laughs> I'm just curious to know what the printout looks like because this this has to be horrible. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I don't think we have the luxury of that data, unfortunately. Um, like, this is really troubling. I was trying to find some of those funky uh, mancocariocytic cells, but I'm not really seeing any. Hey, and refresh my memory here now. Um, I'm kind of, I think I'm losing the uh, the bigger picture. There's like no neutrophils, right? Like, are we seeing like neutrophils? And I thought you know, maybe one said, ask and you shall receive. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> this has got to be like a low true white count right like um oh yeah so i i finally found one yeah this right here is the megacaryocytic fragment okay just and looks that's those two are the or can be seen in mds yep yeah so, so i guess given the patient's demographics if this is an older patient or um younger patient, but this seems to be significant dyspoesis. I'd say so. <clears throat> yeah. And I think this was a good slide to see the whole the whole gamut of NRBCs. Sure. And I like like you said earlier, I think it was great that Stephanie brought up the how are you gonna enumerate NRBCs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of care that should go into that kind of a decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um because like good luck looking through the SOP uh for a nice neat way to do this slide um yeah. this will certainly take a little guidance without thought Definitely. all right well i think that's all we have for this slide so stephanie thank you for joining us for this terrible slide it was, awesome. <laughs> it was jogging my memory here good. i like it <laughs> and everybody else thanks for watching thank you for your time